Hello, everyone, and welcome to this weekly webinar produced by Business Performance USA. And we're always happy to have you here every Tuesday as our guests. And we look forward to hosting today's webinar about social media. I know that we've been doing this series with Kenna that's been very, very popular. You know, Business Performance USA produces weekly webinars on Tuesday at noon central every week. So we provide business insights on a variety of topics that are important to today's business professionals. We are a voluntary association and we provide online business information exchange. So when you become a member, you meet people from across the U.S. who are engaged in business conversations on topics such as what we're presenting today, social media. You can become a member at no cost to you and engage at any time. So just go to businessperformanceusa.org. Many of the benefits that you will enjoy include being able to hear today's webinar on demand and the, all the others that Kenna has provided to us. Let me introduce myself. I'm Cynthia Stewart. I'm one of the co-founders for Business Performance USA and one of the volunteer executives. I'm also managing partner for Evermore Services, which is an LLC that uh, is providing business partnerships to grow your business today and tomorrow. And your presenter, as you see, is Ms. Kenna Lewis. And before I introduce her, let me just make sure that you make this hour well worth it for you. We do offer the opportunity for you to type in a question in the question feature on the dashboard, or if you see the chat feature, that works as well. And I will be monitoring those. If you have also a specific question in the workplace, just email me at Cynthia at businessperformanceusa.org. Please watch our on-demand webinars. You can sign up today at businessperformanceusa.org and check us out also on YouTube. So let's get to Tenna. And I am getting a, a background feedback. So if those of you on will please mute, that will help. Thank you, that helps. So Kenna Lewis, she is owner of Social Centric Media. She's an energetic entrepreneur who first excelled in corporate America with Fortune 500 companies. This sassy socialista follows new developments and trends in SEO, local search, and reputation management to advance client campaigns and optimize their budgets. And she is quite a whiz at it, folks, quite a whiz at it. Kenneth shares how social media marketing can produce high results in coordinated campaigns for those businesses eager to claim market share. And today we'll be talking about Facebook, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And thankfully, uh, Kenna, the timing couldn't be better because Facebook continually upgrades things and we've had a new upgrade. So she was very happy that it fell this month instead of last month because things have changed even since last month. So you want to keep up with that and Kenna's the one to do that for us. So Kenna, what I'm going to do now is go ahead and change presenters to you. Great. Can you see my screen? It's starting to come up. Okay. Let me know when it's up and we are good to go. Why I titled this Facebook, the good, the bad, and the ugly, is because I have a love-hate relationship with Facebook. Facebook has been just a primary source of so much help to businesses all over the world. And as we know, Facebook is a business, and as it's trying to make more money, it has diminished the reach to businesses, and we'll discuss this more, and that's kind of why I have my love hate relationship with it but and by yet, the way we are not seeing your screen yet oh. so okay now well, it says it's let me see let me escape and go figure out what's going on uh, all right hopefully now you will i know that there's a little oh there we go okay now if we see it in full full screen yay Excellent. Hey, okay, it's all yours. <laughs> so we're just going to dive in to the, and talk a little bit about the statistics of Facebook. 80% of U.S. social networks prefer to connect to brands through social media. And that's a pretty stunning fact. Um, and 
I think that sometimes, even though it's a, a social media world via internet and other avenues, and it's not a human voice, people still feel connected because they know what to expect or they know what to understand about that brand. 62% of businesses said social media became more important to their marketing campaigns in the last six months. And I will tell you that I have not been able to update these statistics to find the new ones yet, but this was based on the end of 2013. So I do think that you'll see a change in these dynamics as we move through 2014, but this is the latest information that I have. Um, Social media has a 100% higher lead to close ratio than outbound marketing. And that's a pretty stunning fact. And so that's something you may want to just sit back and say, wow, too. And how, if you're not using social media, how you probably should be. Businesses are using 18% of their budgets on social media, the most of all marketing channels. And I will tell you, based on what I've seen with Facebook and talking to key businesses, multi-million dollar businesses that are doing very well and attributing their success to face um, to social media, you are going to see that actually increase a little bit. Now Facebook statistics. There are 1.28 billion people on Facebook worldwide. 128 million of those are daily active US users. So that means they're on almost every single day checking their Facebook. Yes, some of them may, doing, may be doing it only for personal reasons, but a lot of them that have liked pages and brands wants to see what's going on with them. So they are checking what you're doing. 500 million users are in groups. And I'm, we'll talk a little bit more about groups, but groups may be another way to get a reach within your business that isn't just via your page because you can create a community that's almost like a forum or a chat board where people can come in and ask questions. And it may, and I'm saying may because I really haven't tested this yet, may be a way to get around some of the drop in reach that you're seeing on your Facebook pages. 757 million users log into Facebook every day and five new Facebook profiles are made every second, which is pretty amazing. Uh, the number of businesses that say Facebook is critical to their business has increased by 75%. And again, that was based on the end of 2013. Now, the good on the statistics, businesses that deal with consumers have acquired customers 77% of the time and B2B 43%. Now, I know B2B seems like a harder sell and we've been trialing some things here in Kansas City with some businesses. And I will show you on best business practices as we go through this, a way for you as a business to accelerate and to do better by trying to reach cu customers if you're a B2B. Now, I'm just gonna briefly go over this. It's um, from another presentation or when I actually hold a class and I walk people through actually setting up their Facebook pages. But at the same time, I find that a lot of people don't even know the basic terminology when it comes to Facebook, so it's important that you do. One of the things that's critical is if you hear the word edge rank, it's the algorithm that Facebook uses to determine what content is shown in your users' news feeds. So if you have 100 people that like your Facebook page, EdgeRank determines through their algorithm how many people are going to actually see that post. And that's the frustrating thing for most business users is if you have 1,000 people that like your Facebook page, your hope would be that all 1,000 would get to see your content. Well, Facebook's determined that, no, they're not going to. This is also true of your personal page as well. So if you have 300 great friends and family members, you're not going to see everything from them unless you go to their page and say, I want to see everything. And there's a, a little thing on the right with friends that you can actually hit to make sure that you see all their posts. Right now, only 10% will see your posts in Edge Rank, and actually that has changed a little bit. Um, we're seeing now 2% to 
So it's going down all the way that only, so if you have 100, it's possible that only two people will see your posts. That hit one of my businesses even this morning as we were looking at, at um, what was going on and they probably got 200 people that liked their page and only two people saw their post. So a little scary thought. And they have a page that's had engagement. Uh, you know what a fan is and a friend, you know what a friend list is and a group which we'll talk about a little bit more. And insights are those metrics that Facebook gives your pages to analyze the performance of your content. And a lot of people just bypass it, they don't look at it, and there is a lot of good information. So you need to understand what insight means and use it on your page. Now, to like a business, you become a fan of that business page. So a lot of people will say, what's a like, what's a comment, what's a share? Well, when you like a page, that means you technically want to see what's going on with that page and see their content and posts. And network news feed page, the rest on this one, pretty self-explanatory. So you can take a look at it in the replay if you want to get more information if it's something you're, you don't feel you're comfortable with. Now, a customer timeline is critical when you think about your business marketing customers. First of all, you need to attract customers and some of them could be strangers or some of them could be casual users. Somebody, some of them could have been somebody who walked in your store and made a small purchase. Through social media, you can change those people into visitors, leads, customers, and promoters. And you do that by attracting them converting them, closing, and delighting. And I'm actually working with a couple of businesses now, one that I do their, their actual uh, social media and another one that I do not. But I'm looking and finding out how they delight their customers. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in best um, business practices for your Facebook page coming up. But it is critical but social media does give you that opportunity to do exactly what this customer timeline says. So very important that you have social media active and trying to get engagement for your business. Now, when for those of you who may have casually thrown a page up, your page name is very critical. And if you have a clear brand, use it. And I find a lot of people just put something up and then may, when they were starting out and may within the first six months have changed their page name or their, their actual uh, company name, but never went back and changed their page name. Well, again, for branding purposes, you need consistency. So go back if you don't have 200 fans and make sure that your page name reflects what your current business is. If it's you pass 200, then you can officially petition Facebook to make that change to your official name, but you have to actually go through an official process and it does take time, but I've not seen anybody that they've said no to um, yet. But important that, again, for branding, everything's consistent. Add your basic about information. A lot of people go in, they put in their address, they put in their website, and they put in their phone up hours, their phone number, and maybe the hours of operation. And that's it. The great thing is that the About page is actually indexed in Google. So you want to make sure that it's descriptive and keyword rich. They allow you to use this, so make the most of it. Go to your edit your page and all the different categories that you can put words in will show up. And it does depend on what type of business you have, what actually shows up. So they do different um, categories based on what you've chosen as your business type. But go back no matter what and fill in as descriptive and as much information as you can because it is indexed in Google. So if, even if somebody doesn't go and hit on your actual Facebook page, more information or about, Google will still index it for you. 
make sure to link to your website in this field so people can easily find you. Plus, it's all about getting traffic back to your website, which is going to tell even more of your story. So one of the things that I find more and more businesses not doing with social media is they're not making sure people get back to their website because traffic is still king and the other thing they don't do well is capture emails. So we'll talk about that a little more and you can actually do that through your Facebook page but make sure that your website is prominent on your Facebook page. You can add other websites too, you can put your Twitter up, you can put Pinterest and we'll talk about a little more about that. So if you have those pages, you can actually add those in tabs. You need to like your own page when if you're creating one from scratch, but I don't usually do that right away because I don't want anybody to see that I've liked my page until it's ready to go. <clears throat> Which means I want at least five to ten actual posts completed before I ask anybody to like my page or to see that I've liked my page. And that's because they need to come in and see a flavor of what you're all about. If they come in and see one post, yeah, one, you've not been there very long, and two, they don't know what you're about. So I usually make, um, and sometimes I'll even wait you know, for 15 or 20 posts, maybe do 10 right away with a Facebook page, and then over the next week, add. So when they visually look at the page, they see more than they may actually scroll down. That's a good thing, because obviously they'll see you're busy, that you're consistent, that you're trying to engage, and that it's visually pleasing. So after you've done that, then go and start asking people to like your page that are your friends and family members or people you know um, won't be put off and some people are put off. I know I probably get oh, anywhere from 10 to 20 people a day asking me to like their pages. So I go and I, that's the assessment I make before I decide whether I'm going to like a page or not. If what it looks like visually please, pleasing and if it's also going to be content, that's important to me. Cover photo you probably know about. This will give you the dimensions uh, if you want to change it out. Remember that you can put no more than 20% text on it. And we talked about the About page and adding information. Now here's something that's new, and you may have seen it pop up on your page, and you're not sure where it came from or what to do about it, and that's reviews something that Facebook's changed recently. Um, if you've put your address in and there's a box that says allow check-ins, which means they can check in through Facebook, they can check in through Foursquare, that determines that people can write reviews of your company. This is very controversial, both the way that they're formulating the number of stars and who gets to make that review and where the review is coming from. So there's a lot of controversy about it on people who own pages, and if you go to Facebook forums, you'll see it with, even within Facebook. I had one person who showed a three-star rating, and when I looked at all their actual reviews, every single one of them was five-star. So how could that be that they have a three-star? So either they're pulling in reviews and people are doing it anonymously, which, you know, if you've got a competitor out there and they're savvy enough, they may try to do something like that. Um, so what we did is we took off the check-ins so people couldn't actually review. That way those little stars on your page went away. So that is up to you, but consistently watch that, especially if you don't have a lot of reviews, because one bad one can actually really um, change that to a much lower, like one star or two stars, and you know if you go to a page or even if you're looking online and you see somebody with a one or two star rating, are you likely to go use them? So make sure as a business page owner for your business that you look at that and make that determination if you want those reviews on there or not. 
Kenna, on that topic, quick question. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you can do um, in terms of, you know, deleting the review? Do you have any control whatsoever on the reviews? Once you take off, the reviews will disappear from your page. So if you hit that, um, you take off the checkbox that they are not allowed to check in. I think one, I actually even took off their address. Um, and the reviews went away, so you didn't get to see them anymore. So I know that some businesses, even like Yelp and Yext and some of those other ones that allow reviews, and they're anonymous, um, they're causing problems for businesses because, again, competitors can try to knock you down, and you'll never know who did it. Plus, if it was a legitimate customer, you'd want to probably pick up the phone and call them and say, how can I make this better? So there's a lot of controversy with those reviews, and some of them, um, some of the social media platforms are changing them to where they won't allow anonymous reviews anymore. But just make sure that if you uncheck that box under your About page, then that should take the reviews away. Very good. Thank you. Facebook groups. Now, groups are Facebook groups are slightly different than your business page. Um, a business still can create a group as well. There are networking groups. I mean, this is a great way to do it. Or um, I got invited to a group on, I think it was called High Performing Women in Kansas City or something along those lines. And it was a group and it's all women and they can get in and talk about different things business related, but nobody can promote their pay, their, their own business. So you couldn't get on and say, hey, I've got a special today for $4.99 because they think that that would take away from what they're trying to achieve. But yet at the same time, if you're busy and you're active, people are seeing you and they'll know what business you're in. So I'm thinking too for a business, if you have users that want to engage and talk about, depending on what your product is, that a group might be something for you to look at. Um, it can be by invitation only. People can join groups and you can accept them or not accept them a little bit like um, LinkedIn does. But it's a chat room. And the thing about it is, if you do it, then you're going to have to monitor it. Because if people are on there asking you questions about your business, and this is true of your Facebook page too, you have to answer them. If they have a complaint, you have to deal with it. So it's, you know, it's a time thing again, but it's something to look at depending on what type of business you have. When you actually do your business, your posts on your business page, don't oversell your product. If I go to a page and that is all they're doing, I will not like that page. Or if I've liked a page and all of a sudden that's all they're doing, I probably will go back and unlike it because most people don't want to be sold to 100% of the time. So use the 80-20 rule here. Talk about your business. And you can still do it without selling. You can give great tips on a product. You can um, talk about a new product coming out, how it benefits somebody without making that that hard sale push. So don't oversell your product. Facebook allows you to, to create custom tabs. And there are applications that allow you to do this. So if you have Constant Contact or MailChimp or an email platform, you can make a tab. And I know like Constant Contacts has their little logo, and I think MailChimp does too. So somebody can actually go in and sign up for your email, new, uh, your, yeah, your newsletter. That's really still gold, and people don't realize how much email is still gold. So make sure you do something like that. And even if you don't use one of those two, there are other applications out there that allow you to use through Facebook to pull your email up. So you should be doing that. Um, if you have a very visual or your business Pinterest page is good, go ahead and put that tab there so people can hit that and they can automatically start looking at your Pinterest page through Facebook. 
Um, I know that's worked very well for one of my clients who has a lot, I mean, a lot of boards, a lot of stuff, but has a book that she sells. And she sold her book through Facebook and through Pinterest, but it was also through that connection on Facebook that they saw the Pinterest and bought the book. So do things like that. Create some fun tabs. Um, because it's another way that you can use some space in Facebook to your advantage. Now when you're doing your page, add milestones. People overlook this. Put attention to your significant events in your business history. If you've been around for a year or 10 years or 20 years, make it a milestone. If you've gotten any kind of award, make it a milestone. And what happens is, you can just look at a business as milestone sometimes, but it also has a different look for the milestone on your page, and it's the full page, and so people are going to see it, and it just really does draw attention on your page, so use it. Um, anytime you get an accolade, or maybe one of your employees gets an accolade that's, that's big, you can use that milestone feature. Um, so you just create it and it'll say milestone and, and when you post it, uh, actually publish it, then it will show up as a milestone and take the full width of your page. Also, use Facebook Insights. Um, click on the admin panel and it is the internal analytics that Facebook gives you and it's gotten better and better. At first I thought it was not that well done, but it really is growing and giving you a lot of good information about your views. Now it might make you a little depressed based on the way things are trending with Facebook as your reach is declining, but at least you'll see what's consistently going on and you can also see uh, what type of posts you get the most likes or shares from and that's really critical for your business uh, because those kind of posts are just golden for you to keep your reach up so take a look at those analytics and use them. I like launching a contest. Um, however, uh, this is something that Facebook watches uh, and they will kick you or suspend your page for a while if you don't follow their strict guidelines. So you need to either look up their guidelines or Wildfire um, is an app that you can use which makes sure you're very consistent with uh, Facebook's terms of service for a contest. So use it. Um, you can get a lot of people in, you can get a lot of fun competition going, uh, there are different things that you can do. So launching a contest is not a bad thing. Um, also specials, I know I've talked about don't oversell, but do one occasionally. I had a dentist who just didn't want to do a special and finally after a year did a special and he did it on teeth whitening. And we set it out there and he probably got 10 to 20 new clients in the door just from doing a special. And um, so think about that as well as launching a contest. Now on your Facebook posts, you can tag other users and business pages. Um, one of the things I don't like about uh, your Facebook business page is that when a person comes and likes it, it shows an increase in likes, so you can go from 100 to 101. If a business comes and likes your page, it doesn't increase your likes. And in the last two weeks, I've noticed I don't even get a notification saying that a business likes your page. And I've done that between a couple of business pages that I run to make sure that's true, and it has been which is upsetting to me, especially if you're a B2B, you want to know another business likes your page because, you know, there's a reach out, there's a coffee, there's a, you know, just seeing who's trying to connect or watch what you're doing. Might be a competitor too, but at least you know that somebody's watching. Um, so what happens is it's not very clear, but when you're on your page and it'll say people who have liked it on the far left side. If you hit that, it'll show you people or businesses. Go to the businesses, or it might even be others, that have liked the page. And that way you can see all the businesses that have liked your page. 
So that becomes important. I'd go back and like them if it's somebody you want to do business with or somebody that you know might just be in your chamber of commerce. So important to reach out, tag other businesses. Right now, um, we just did this Happy Kansas City uh, video to uh, Will uh, to Pharrell's uh, Happy Song, and it's kind of, it's going around. And I picked it up from another website, another um, actually business page that posted it. I shared it from their business page to another person's business page, and guess what happened? They went and liked their page. And now they're actually going out for coffee to talk. So going to other business pages and taking a look at what they're doing, sharing their content could potentially get you business. So make sure that you tag other businesses or people when you post if it's legitimate. Um, so that's, I think, very important for you to do. Um, connect other channels. Make sure you set your Facebook up to post to Twitter, but you never want your Twitter to post to Facebook, and a lot of people make that decision. Very different platforms, very different ways of speaking, and I'll talk about Twitter, which I absolutely love, next month, but you want to make sure your Facebook posts go to Twitter, but not the other way around. So. If you have YouTube, Flickr, SlideShare, if you put up a, um, a presentation on SlideShare, you can connect that or make sure that you at least put it up in a post for people to see. And you can use questions and polls for fan feedback, another way to get engagement, and people like that. Now, Again, I talked about it a little bit, and this is a crazy statistic to me and makes me very, very sad, actually, and still hard for me to believe. 95% of brands do not respond to customers' comments or complaints on Facebook. 95%. If I have somebody, I put up... Um, an article about security that you're gonna you're gonna hear a little bit about at the end of this um, on Facebook terms of service for Android phones um, somebody wrote I put that um, <clears throat> article up and somebody wrote Wow I mean just one little word but I wrote back to her on that page and said agreed almost NSA like it was a funny little comment but she has engaged more now liking pictures and sharing them and it was probably just because I responded to her wow so even if people say hey you know have a great day or something like that make sure that you try to respond to people because if they're taking a moment out of their time to write something on your page then take a moment out of your day to, to write back to them uh, and of course you don't have to do that 100% of the time but if you are consistently doing that, people will see that, even if you're not doing it to every person that posts. And hopefully your engagement will become so big that you won't have time to do that, but you can do it when it becomes most important. But as you're building that engagement, it's probably a good thing to do it as many times as you can. Um, customers expect your band, brand to be responsive on social media. They want you to have the same customer service as they would in your store or they would if they called you on the phone. So don't take that lightly and don't fail here. It is a great way to stand out from your competition because if you're listening to this and caring about it, I'm telling you your competition probably is not. So make sure you're responsive. Now post at optimal times for your business. I'm starting to do more testing in this area. See what gets the most response from your audience. And it's also because of the trending that Facebook's doing, taking your reach away. So this kind of testing is going to become more critical. It used to be that an early morning post um, and potentially a later at night post got the most response. Depends on what type of business you are and what your demographic is of your customers. 
if they're stay-at-home moms or working moms, that makes a difference. Some people get on and look at Facebook early in the morning, and some people get on at lunchtime, and some people get on after work. If you have international customers, don't forget them. You can schedule your posts on Facebook, so make sure you understand what your demographic is and post accordingly. So, and you can play with that by scheduling posts so you don't have to be up at midnight or whatever if you've got people in, in different countries. So schedule, see what is getting response and then you'll start being able to key in a little bit more on when your target market is actually on Facebook. We found that engagement is usually always higher on Thursday and Friday. It's probably looking forward to that weekend and people are just in a better mood. So they're engaging more on Thursday and Friday. Do not post in rapid succession. This is a huge no-no uh, for lots of reasons. One, it irritates the heck out of people. I, my brother is, I have a brother who's 70 plus and um, he said that uh, he does that. If he sees people that have consistently posted in his news feed when he goes in, he, he just quits following them. And that can be personal friends and family members too. But for him, that just really irritates him. Plus, it's not good for your business because there is a life to your post. And the average life for that is three to four hours. Now, if I post now and post an hour from now, Facebook will ne not show the post before anymore, it'll only show the post that's most current. So you lose your exposure on that first post. So that's why I want you to have an average life to your post, and this is Facebook statistics of three to four hours. There are a few brands that, but they're big brands that post a lot and their posts may die out in an hour. You, most of you will not be there. So make sure that if you're scheduling multiple posts to make sure when your optimal time is, then make sure you have at least three to four hours in between. Ken, we have a question on, on kind of on this topic. It's really around how long um, do you think it, it's reasonable to spend on Facebook? You're running a business. Um, you're trying to serve your customers. Um, what kind of time frame should people plan on? Like, is it a 30-minute deal or an hour deal or check in every 10 well, minutes? Or what's the best no, process? Yeah. Nobody can check every 10 minutes. But depending on how active your engagement becomes, then you may have to, you may have to check it three times a day. You may have to check in the morning. You may have to check at lunch. And you may have to check in the evening. If not, you ought to check on the morning and the evening. Um, of things that are posted if you can't do that mid-afternoon. So there's probably something, and if, if nobody's engaged, you may not have to respond, so it takes less time. However, if nobody's ever <laughs> engaged and out there, then that's also a concern too. But, um, you know, you can actually sit down on a Monday morning or a Sunday or whatever, and you can schedule your posts out for the entire week. If something comes up, you can change that around. Or um, I know, again, the dentist I have when, when I believe it was in Oklahoma, that person who hadn't cleaned a, sterilized equipment and there was hepatitis and a, whatever going on, and it was bad, um, we stopped our posts for that day and scheduled stuff around that breaking news to put his customer mind at ease. And so then we just push those posts out. Um, so you do need to respond to news or breaking events that affect your business and potentially your clients. Um, I don't know if that helped at all. And it's, it's different for different businesses the amount of time. And I think, I think everybody who has a business should sit down with a coach. Um, a marketing social media coach at least you know once every so often to see what they're doing how they should be doing it the time they need to spend so they at least keep on the right track uh, that was very helpful Kenna and 
we have another kind of follow-up question. You may get to this, but okay. are you going to tell us uh, where to schedule your posts? When you post, it, I don't have the actual screenshot of it, but when you do your actual little post, on the far left corner, you'll see a clock. Uh, hit that, and it'll then bring up a little calendar, and you can schedule the date, and then you can schedule the time, and they do it in military time, so it's 24 hours. So you can schedule your post and then hit schedule. So if I'm scheduling out a week's worth of posts, what I will do then is I go back to the activity log, and every time you schedule something, it'll say, do you want to go to the activity log? Go back and look to make sure that you've posted on the correct day and time because it's easy, especially when you're doing multiple posts, to end up putting two on Monday at 8 o'clock when one should have been Tuesday. But that far left corner on your business page will have a clock, and that's how you schedule. Okay, thank you. Uh, frequency of posts. Uh, I think you ought to try to post a minimum of once a day during the business week, especially now with scheduling posts. That makes it easier. But again, I caution, just because you schedule the week ahead of time, that doesn't mean you get back on. You don't get back on and look to see what's happening with your page and your response. Uh, look at posting a couple times a day to see what happens. Again, trying to find your optimum post time. And uh, again, the three to four hours, though, for each post. Uh, to see what's going on. Now, I will say that in the news feed, one of the things that has changed is that Facebook's trying to be more Twitter-like in that Twitter's the place to go if you want breaking news. They're trying to do that. You'll see more of it in your news feed. If that affects you, then you may want to post you know, on top of each post. Again, if you've got something going on, such as a tornado that hits your city, or bad weather, or you know, something horrible is going on, or something wonderful is going on. Um, you might want to post a little bit more frequently than just to be um, out there with the current event that's going on. One of the things I did find interesting on asking questions is that ask questions tries to get a response from your audience, and that's what you want. If somebody responds to one of your posts, they are going to consistently see your post for a while. So that's really important. Uh, what I find interesting is ask where, when, should. Avoid why. People don't respond to why. So ask a question, but only when, would, and should. And I think a great way to try to get engagement is to say, let us know what you think. That's pretty easy to do. Um, another thing people don't do enough of is place your Facebook icon that connects to your Facebook page on your website, your blog, wherever you can. I mean, I go into businesses, like us on Facebook, boom. Some of them might even have little cards there to, so you can go take it and remind yourself when you get home. Uh, if you've got email and you're sending email out, you make sure that you have your social media icons there so they can connect with you on whatever platform they choose to connect with you on. So very important and underutilized by a lot of businesses. Be visual. Um, great pictures inspire more shares and likes, so put that on there. They love inspiring quotes on pictures. Again, they respond, they like, that's what you want. Spotlight your employees. Post pictures of employers at work. New trucks, I can't imagine. Sometimes people have put new trucks up, how much <laughs> responsiveness they are getting. Now, granted. Some are painted, some are not, but people respond. Uh, if you've got an employee that does something great, show it. Um, this dentist office I did, we did um, once a week a picture of everybody in their audience with a little bio. Now, there was one person who did not want to be put on the page, so make sure you have their permission to post. Uh, be funny. People love humor. Use it. Even if you're a business page, you can use it appropriately, so do it. Um, Current events, we've kind of talked a little bit about this, but be careful with politics, religion. Um, obviously, if it's something that's very important to you, go ahead and do it. Some people may get turned off by that, and you know that's just the way it is. And some people try to avoid those topics um, to not cause that controversy. Inappropriate words. I 
I don't like it. I know there are people who are doing it. Um, and, you know, I wasn't born yesterday, so it's not like if somebody says it, I get bugged by it. But for some reason, on a Facebook page, on something that represents your brand, I really don't like it. Um, but you have to do what's right for you. Sporting events are great, you know, keeping up with the, you know, Oklahoma Thunder, or the Kansas City Royals, or the New York Yankees. Um, however, be careful of rivalries. I mean, KU and MU is, you still think the Civil War is going on here, even though MU went to the SEC, but people lose clients sometimes, or potential customers, because they come out pro MU or pro KU. You wouldn't think that would happen. I actually picked up an MU client, and I'm a pro ku -er, so I kind of watch it, but I did say something, um, and he kind of gave me some grief back, and I just chuckled and took it well and whatever, and so we kept up a discussion, a little friendly rivalry, and he turned out to be um, a client of mine. So you never know, but just be careful about that because that can happen. And look at community outreach and views, what's going on in your community. Um, we just had AIDS walks here. I know a lot of people put out pictures of their business um, employees walking for different things. Those are great. People love seeing that type of stuff. Now, I've kind of talked about this, and I know we're kind of running, and I want to get to a couple more things, but make it personal. People want to know you're human. They want to be able to relate to you and your business. So make sure your business looks human. That's why if you do a great phil philanthropy, post it. If you just do some cool stuff, I mean, we had a guy who, um, I guess uh, on, on one of the pages, helped up an elderly woman, and somebody took a picture of it. And then they sent it to the business, and they ended up posting it, and they got a lot of response from it. So you just never know, but make it personal. Uh, show people who you are. If you do do charity, make sure you put it up. If you really care about something or a cause, uh, put that up. So engage with your fans. If you walk away from nothing in this presentation, Facebook is critical for engagement. And that's what you want, especially with your rank going down, which we're talking about on the next page. Um, engagement is so important. So the bad. Your posts are being seen by only 2 to 10% of the people who like your page. And there is a lot of chatter out there that that reach will go to zero by the end of 2014, the beginning of 2015. And there's my love-hate relationship. So what do you do? Well, you're going to have to look at a pay-to-play strategy for your business. And you can budget what you want. I know there are some people that... I mean, right now they make it look like it's $10 a day. You know, that's $300 a month roughly. And for some businesses, they just can't do that. So that's why your strategy of your other social media platforms are critical right now. And also that's why I think you need to reach out and talk to a coach on um, a social media consulting person to talk about what's best for your business. Um, and you can pay, figure out what you want to pay for a week and maybe you only do some critical posts on a Thursday and Friday when engagement's really up for your business, and maybe only, you know, then maybe spend 40 bucks um, a month, and that may be very doable for some. <clears throat> if you're going to do something with Facebook, don't buy fans. Um, buy views. It's just silly because buying fans aren't people who probably will really engage with your business, so you want to buy views on your promotions and your content. Um, <clears throat> and I know people who have had success with this and I know people who haven't. So I think how you build your promotion is going to be key and um, what you're trying to achieve. You know, I had uh, one client who spent a thousand bucks over a few months and didn't see anything for it. I had another client that spent 500 bucks and saw one person in or two people in but they did $500 um, packages each, so they were really trying to determine was it worth it for them and were there wording changes they could make to try to get more people in. Engage, again, the other social media strategies, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Instagram, Snapchat, and yes, there are businesses such as Acura, Taco Bell, MTV that are using Snapchat effectively 
um, in their reach out to, especially if your demographic is 25 and below, you ought to look at Snapchat. So talk to a social media coach or marketing because, and, and that's not, you can either have somebody do it, yes, but even if you talk to somebody once a quarter, it'd probably be worth it for you to do with everything that's changing. Now the ugly. The ugly and the scary. Now I will tell you, I want, I want you to see this. Um, this is only currently on Android phones, but it's something that if I can put a bug in your head to watch at all times, please do. Most people, when they add a app on their phone, they just agree to the terms of service and they don't look what they're really agreeing to. I did it last night on my iPhone phone, iPhone, yeah, and it doesn't have it this way. iPhone is much stricter, so the terms of service for iPhone is different than Android from Facebook, but you need to see this. Um, read phone status and identity. If you agreed on your Android phone, it allows the app to access the phone features of your device, determine the phone number and device IDs, whether a call is active and the remote number connected by a call. And it can allow the app to call phone numbers without your intervention. This may result in unexpected charges or calls. Note that this doesn't allow the app to call emergency numbers. This is the one that is really kind of scared me was read your text messages. Uh, Facebook allows the app to read SMS messages stored on your phone or SIM card. It allows the app to read all SMS messages regardless of content or confidentiality. And I will tell you, Facebook has taken some slams the beginning of this year because people know they've read their messages. So <laughs> think about that. I'm, they're trying to react to the privacy concerns. Um, and I understand that people need to get marketing information, but if you're a lawyer, if you've got something that has really confidential text messages, you know, do you allow anybody else to read it? Why would you give that to app? And there are a couple other apps out there that actually do the same thing. So it's not just Facebook. Allows the app to modify your phone's call log, including data about incoming and outgoing calls. Allows the app to read data about your contacts stored on your phone, including the frequency with which you called, emailed, or communicated in other ways with individuals. And lastly, read calendar events plus confidential information. Allows the app to read all calendar events stored on your phone, including those of friends or coworkers. And this may allow the app to share or save your calendar data. And it allows the app to add, remove, change events that you can modify on your phone. Now, part of that is due to if somebody invites you to an event on Facebook, you will see it on your calendar. So, obviously, they've added it, whether you've said maybe or you've not even wanted to, you've just kind of blown it off, you will see it show up on your phone and it does, it still shows up on mine, even on my iPhone. So I'm kind of leaving you with the ugly in the sense that as social media builds out, there's over 400 different social media icons, I mean uh, apps out there and ways to engage. Read your terms of service and make sure that even though it's Facebook, or it's Twitter or whatever, understand what rights you're giving up when you say yes to the terms of service. So if I can caution and leave everybody with the thought that they're going to be diligent in looking at that, I'm happy. And are there any other questions? Because I'm done. I'm off my soapbox. Yes, so what you're saying, Kenna, is that when you accept the terms of service, you automatically allow Facebook to do the reading calendars and access. Yes. Okay. And there's not a way in the security features to prevent that. Now this is on your phone. This is on, on your phone, not your web. This is right. not this web. This is on your phone. So, and if you go and this is Android right now, not iPhone, cause iPhone's a lot more strict, but, um, if you go and look up articles, you'll find articles that have surrounded this in 2014. Um, there are a lot of people that have t removed the Facebook app and the Messenger app from their phones just for this reason, and they're only doing content. 
I mean doing everything on the web uh, from their computers. So just be aware of it and very conscious of it, but look at all the apps you download and, and take a look at the terms of service. We tend to just say yes without really looking at them. Very good advice. Very good advice. Okay, so um, you want to go ahead and scroll forward and we'll go ahead and oh, sure. wrap Next this up. Yeah, I want to let everyone know that Kenna will be back on June 3rd to talk about Twitter for business. And as she mentioned, she absolutely loves Twitter and she knows a lot about Twitter. So you want to be here for that. And uh, also, if you've missed any of the webinars that she has given across these months and she started, Kenna, was it January? Was it February? March. Uh, let's see. I've done Pinterest. I think it was I've March. And LinkedIn, one before. So this yeah. is my fourth. Yeah. So Kenna has, all of her webinars have been recorded, and we have them on businessperformanceusa.org, and you can go at your own leisure. And guess what? Our terms and conditions do not <laughs> access your phone contacts or any of your contacts, and you can sign up for free and watch her, and she's awesome. And uh, I want to make sure to say that her company, Social Centric Media, does provide excellent uh, st strategy development and planning for use of your of social media for your businesses and so you can contact her write this number down 816-582-7366 info at social centric media and uh, get in contact she works with people all over the country and um, she is your guru and that's why we've brought her into business performance usa and she is a volunteer executive to produce these webinars However, as a media coach uh, and so forth, you will talk with her about how to engage with her. And let me invite you back next week because we will have the ever popular Kent Stroman back. He's going to be talking with us about seven keys to success in high stakes asking. And this is an excellent, excellent uh, webinar that he has planned for us. He's the founder of the Institute for Conversational Fundraising. I have to say that very slowly, but uh, Kent is excellent. He got excellent reviews on his webinar. So come back next Tuesday, noon central, and engage with us on businessperformanceusa.org. With that, thank you so much, Kenna, for your wi words of wisdom. I'll be going back and watching this on multiple occasions. Thanks, everyone. That's it for this week, and we'll see you back next week. Bye-bye. Thank you.